One of the biggest question marks in all of linguistics, if not science itself, concerns the origin of language and its relationship with human evolution. We will likely never know the answer, but that hasn't stopped people from trying. Hello, my name is Christopher, and in today's video, we're diving into one of the greatest mysteries of mankind's eternal quest for knowledge, where language came from. Obviously, I don't know the answer, and neither do you. Nobody does, but we do have some interesting ideas. Now, originally I was planning on covering all the major theories on this subject, like we did for the Proto-Indo-Europeans, but then I realised that the origin of language is actually an entire field of study, way too much content for a single video. So, instead I'd like to discuss only the early, simple theories, which have some of the funniest names I've ever heard. But before we begin, we should remind ourselves why we have no clear answer on the matter. Well, it's because we don't have a time machine, because language is intangible and doesn't fossilise. This means that scholars must rely heavily on inference and speculation from archaeological discoveries, language diversity and acquisition, animal communication, human behaviour and more. In fact, the lack of direct evidence led the Linguistic Society of Paris in 1866 to actually ban any future debates on the subject, a stigma that persisted throughout much of the 20th century. It was only in the 1990s that researchers from various disciplines began to take a fresh look at the problem using new technologies. As such, the theories for today are all dated before that fateful year. Okay, so. To best understand these theories, it's important to place them in context. Pop quiz, what groundbreaking scientific work was published in 1859? Any takers? Of course it was Charles Darwin's On the Origin of Species, the foundation of modern evolutionary biology. During that time, the prevailing idea about the origin of language was that it came somehow from imitation, which Darwin crystallised in his later book The Descent of Man, writing, quote, I cannot doubt that language owes its origin to the imitation and modification, aided by signs and gestures, of various natural sounds, the voices of other animals, and man's own instinctive cries. With that in mind, we can finally take a look at the specific ideas German-born linguist Max Müller compiled in 1861, the first of which he called the Bow Wow Theory. I told you they had great names. It suggests that speech arose through imitation of the natural world, especially from animals like birds. In many languages, for example, the word for crow contains speech sounds that resemble its call, including ak or ka. For most words, however, the sound is pretty arbitrary. Next is the poo-poo theory, which has an even greater name. It pertains really to the last part of Darwin's line about man's own instinctive cries emotional exclamations brought on by feelings of pain, pleasure and surprise. Think of interjections like ow, ah and wow. But plenty of animals do this too, most notably dogs with barking. But only we ended up with language. Third is the ding dong theory, which is related to bow wow but instead emphasises imitation not so much of other animals, but of vibrations, the natural resonance or sound symbolism in all objects. Think of the noise produced by a hammerstone, for instance, when crafting an arrowhead. But like before, there really aren't so many things that have a distinctive sound associated with them. Fourth is the Yi He Ho theory, my personal favourite. It postulates that language originated from rhythmic labour in a community, the coordination or physical exertion with grunts like heave and ho. You may have seen or heard something like this in a movie or documentary with a chain gang building a railroad. However, it's also difficult to imagine how this would become full language. 
fifth is the Tata theory, suggesting that speech arose not from imitating sounds of the natural environment, but from one's own body. Think of the tongue manoeuvre to produce a sound like ta ta as mimicking a hand wave. It's certainly faster as well as hands free, which could have been useful for our busy ancestors. But the number of such gestures is quite limited. La la is the sixth and final theory, emphasising the role played by our eternal spiritual, poetic and romantic side, that the sounds of love, play and early song led ultimately to the development of language. And in truth, it's really no more or less probable than any of the other ideas. Now, the main issue that unifies these theories and their shortcomings is that they're all so mechanistic, assuming that language evolved upon discovery of the physical apparatus to connect sounds with meaning. And that's almost too simplistic, not abstract enough for modern scientists. It's not even so much that the 19th century theories are wrong. After all, we still don't have one that we know is right. And it's very likely that there's some truth to imitation, especially through onomatopoeia like with crows. But they are certainly incomplete, if not also a bit naive. But hey, I think they were a good start and I did greatly enjoy saying poo poo and ding dong theory. Alright, that's all for today. Please give this video a like if you learned something and let me know in the comment section what you think of these early theories. Do you find any of them more convincing than others? What linguistic mystery should I cover next? Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. My sources are in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching.